Jamaica. Pali versions. Pali English version and Pali Devanagari version. The Naga. On one occasion, the Lord was dwelling at Savathi in Jetta's Grove, Anathapindika's Park. Then, in the morning, the Lord dressed, took his bowl and robe, and entered Savathi for alms. When he had walked for alms in Savathi, after his meal, on returning from his alms round, he addressed the venerable Ananda. Come, Ananda, let us go to Migaramata's mansion in the eastern park to pass the day. Yes, Bhante, the venerable Ananda replied. Then the Lord, together with the venerable Ananda, went to Migaramata's mansion in the eastern park. Then in the evening, the Lord emerged from seclusion and addressed the Venerable Ananda. Come, Ananda, let us go to the eastern gate to bathe. Yes, Bhante, the Venerable Ananda replied. Then the Lord, together with the Venerable Ananda, went to the eastern gate to bathe. Having bathed at the eastern gate and come out, he stood in one robe drying himself. On that occasion, King Pasanadi of Kosala's bull elephant named Sita was coming out through the eastern gate to the accompaniment of instrumental music and drumming. People saw him and said, The king's bull elephant is handsome. The king's bull elephant is beautiful. The king's bull elephant is graceful. The king's bull elephant is massive. He's a Naga, truly a Naga. When this was said, the Venerable Udai said to the Lord, Bhante, is it only when people see an elephant possessed of a large massive body that they say, a Naga, truly a Naga? Or do people also say this when they see other things possessed of a large massive body? Dot. Udai, when people see an elephant possessed of a large massive body, they say, a Naga, truly a Naga. When people see a horse possessed of a large massive body, they say, a Naga, truly a Naga. When people see a bull possessed of a large massive body, they say, a Naga, truly a Naga. When people see a serpent possessed of a large massive body, they say, a Naga, truly a Naga. When people see a tree possessed of a large massive body, they say, a Naga, truly a Naga. When people see a human being possessed of a large massive body, they say, A Naga, truly a Naga. But, Udai, in the world with its Devas, Mara, and Brahma, in this population with its ascetics and Brahmins, its Devas and humans, I call one a Naga who does no evil by body, speech, and mind. It's astounding and amazing. Bhante, how well this was stated by the Lord. But, Udai, in the world with its Devas, Mara, and Brahma, in this population with its ascetics and Brahmins, its Devas and humans, I call one a Naga who does no evil by body, speech, and mind. I rejoice, Bhante, in this good statement of the Lord with these verses. Dot. A human being who is fully enlightened, self-tamed and self-absorbed, traveling on the path of Brahma. He takes delight in peace of mind. I have heard from the Arahant, that even the Devas pay homage to him, to the same one whom humans venerate, the one who has gone beyond everything. He has transcended all fetters, and emerged from the jungle to the clearing. Dot. Delighting in renunciation of sensual pleasures. He is like pure gold freed from its ore. He is the Naga who outshines all. Like the Himalayas amid the other mountains. Among all things named Naga. He, unsurpassed is the one truly named. Dot. I will extol for you the Naga. Dot. Indeed, he does no evil. Mildness and harmlessness are two feet of the Naga. Austerity and celibacy. Are the Naga's other two feet. Faith is the great Naga's trunk. And indifference his ivory tusks.
Mindfulness is his neck, his head is panna. Investigation, and reflection on phenomena. Dharma is the balanced heat of his belly. And seclusion is his tail. This meditator, delighting in consolation, is inwardly well self-absorbed. When walking, the naga is self-absorbed. When standing, the naga is self-absorbed. When lying down, the naga is self-absorbed. When sitting, too, the naga is self-absorbed. Everywhere, the naga is restrained. This is the naga's accomplishment. He eats blameless food, but doesn't eat what is blameworthy. When he gains food and clothing, he avoids storing it up, having cut off all fetters and bonds, whether they be gross or subtle. In whatever direction he goes, he goes without concern. The lotus flower is born and grown up in water, yet is not soiled by the water, but remains fragrant and delightful. Just so the Buddha, well born in the world, dwells in the world, yet is not soiled by the world. Like the lotus unsoiled by water, a great fire all ablaze, settles down when deprived of fuel, and when all the coals have gone out, it is said to be extinguished. This simile, which conveys the meaning, was taught by the wise. Great Nagas will know the Naga. That was taught by the Naga. Devoid of lust, devoid of hatred, devoid of delusion, without taints. The Naga, discarding his body, taintless, is utterly quenched, and attains final Nibbana. Dot. Migasala. Then, in the morning, the venerable Ananda dressed, took his bowl and robe, and went to the house of the female lay follower Migasala, where he sat down on the seat prepared for him. Then the female lay disciple Migasala approached the venerable Ananda, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said, Dot. Bhante Ananda, just how should this teaching of the Lord be understood, where one who is celibate and one who is not celibate both have exactly the same destination in their future life? My father Purana was celibate, living apart, abstaining from sexual intercourse, the common person's practice. When he died, the Lord declared. He attained to the state of a once-returner and has been reborn in the Tuzita group of Devas. My paternal uncle Isadatta was not celibate, but lived a contented married life. When he died, the Lord also declared. He attained to the state of a once-returner and has been reborn in the Tuzita group of Devas, Bhante Ananda. Just how should this teaching of the Lord be understood, where one who is celibate and one who is not celibate both have exactly the same destination in their future life? Dot. It was just in this way, sister, that the Lord declared it. Then, when the venerable Ananda had received alms food at Migasala's house, he rose from his seat and departed. After his meal, on returning from his alms round, he went to the Lord, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said, Here, Bhante, in the morning, I dressed, took my bowl and robe, and went to the house of the female lay follower Migasala. All is above, down to. When she asked me this, I replied, It was just in this way, sister, that the Lord declared it. The Lord said, Who, indeed, is the female lay follower Migasala, an unwise, incompetent woman with a woman's intellect. And who are those who have the knowledge of other persons as superior and inferior? Dot. There are, Ananda, these six types of persons found existing in the world. What six? Dot. Here, Ananda, there is one person who is mild, a pleasant companion, with whom his fellow monks gladly dwell. But he has not listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and he does not attain temporary liberation. With the breakup of the body, after death, 
He heads for deterioration, not for distinction. He is one going to deterioration, not to distinction. Then, Ananda, there is one person who is mild, a pleasant companion, with whom his fellow monks gladly dwell. And he has listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and he attains temporary liberation. With the breakup of the body, after death, he heads for distinction, not for deterioration. He is one going to distinction, not to deterioration. Ananda, those who are judgmental will pass such judgment on them. This one has the same qualities as the other. Why should one be inferior and the other superior? That judgment of theirs will indeed lead to their harm and suffering for a long time. Between them. Ananda. The person who is mild. A pleasant companion. One with whom his fellow monks gladly dwell. Who has listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and who attains temporary liberation, surpasses and excels the other person. For what reason? because the Dharma stream carries him along. But who can know this difference except the Tathagata? Dot. Therefore, Ananda, do not be judgmental regarding people. Do not pass judgment on people. Those who pass judgment on people harm themselves. I alone, or one like me, may pass judgment on people. Then, Ananda, in one person anger and conceit are found and from time to time states of greed arise in him. And he has not listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and he does not attain temporary liberation. With the breakup of the body, after death, he heads for deterioration, not for distinction. He is one going to deterioration, not to distinction. Then, Ananda, in one person anger and conceit are found, and from time to time states of greed arise in him. But he has listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and he attains temporary liberation. With the breakup of the body, after death, he heads for distinction, not for deterioration. He is one going to distinction, not to deterioration. Ananda, those who are judgmental will pass such judgment on Thami alone, or one like me, may pass judgment on people. Then, Ananda, in one person anger and conceit are found, and from time to time he engages in exchanges of words. And he has not listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and he does not attain temporary liberation. With the breakup of the body, after death, he heads for deterioration, not for distinction. He is one going to deterioration, not to distinction. Then, Ananda, in one person anger and conceit are found, and from time to time he engages in exchanges of words. But he has listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view and he attains temporary liberation. With the breakup of the body, after death, he heads for distinction, not for deterioration. He is one going to distinction, not to deterioration. Ananda, those who are judgmental will pass such judgment on them. This one has the same qualities as the other. Why should one be inferior and the other superior? That judgment of theirs will indeed lead to their harm and suffering for a long time. Between them. Ananda. The person in whom anger and conceit are found. And who from time to time engages in exchanges of words. But who has listened to the teachings, become learned in him, and penetrated them by view, and who attains temporary liberation, surpasses and excels the other person. For what reason? Because the Dharma stream carries him along. But who can know this difference except the Tathagata? Dot. Therefore, Ananda, do not be judgmental regarding people. Do not pass judgment on people. Those who pass judgment on people harm themselves.
I alone, or one like me, may pass judgment on people. Who, indeed, is the female lay follower Migasala, an unwise, incompetent woman with a woman's intellect? And who are those who have the knowledge of other persons as superior and inferior? Dot. These are the six types of persons found existing in the world. Ananda, if Isadatta had possessed the same kind of virtuous behavior that Purana had, Purana could not have even known his destination. And if Purana had possessed the same kind of panna that Isadatta had, Isadatta could not have even known his destination. In this way, Ananda, these two persons were each deficient in one respect.